Africa is nature's ideal training ground for future global problem solvers. So why do I say this? For three reasons. Africa is big. It occupies 20.4% of the world's land mass. Africa is rich in natural resources, having 90% of the world's platinum and 10% of its oil. Africa has lots of people. 1.3 billion people strong today, and by 2020, will represent 19% of the world's population and the potential to contribute 35% of the world's young workforce. Now, when you ask most people about Africa, they characterize it by its problems. And Africa has a lot of those problems. They include poverty, inadequate food supply, inadequate water supply, inadequate energy supply, weapons proliferation, and also things like domestic terrorism, as well as environmental and pollution issues. But what most people don't know is that Africa also has solutions. Solutions that could potentially be of value to the rest of the world. So let's explore a few of those solutions. So the first one is with respect to inter-regional trade and intra-country trade. Africa's intra-regional trade has been characterized by marginal success because of lack of infrastructure, as well as the lack of access to capital or the expensive access to capital that has left more than 80% of Africa's population unbanked. So the solution, remember Rwanda, war-torn Rwanda, has built its capital city and transformed it into a digital city. Today, Rwanda is facilitating amazing trade in East Africa. Rwanda is creating jobs. Rwanda is alleviating poverty. Another company called Transwitch, a Nigerian financial technology company, has enabled ubiquitous capital access. So today, capital can be accessed anywhere, anytime, anyhow. What that has done is changed the ability for small manufacturers to grow, for farmers to receive the capital that they need to grow local products, eliminating costly imports. So jobs are being created, and regions are growing. I'll give you another example of Africa solving its own problems with disease prevention and disease management. In 2014, at the height of the Ebola crisis, a young man came into Nigeria from Liberia. Sick on arrival, he went to a private hospital, found he was Ebola positive. Nigeria unveiled the most comprehensive, locally developed platform to go after Ebola. They leveraged local content, local technology, and the local medical health care infrastructure. In five weeks, Nigeria was able to eliminate Ebola without the intervention of the CDC or the WHO. Another example is with respect to job and skills diversity. Any big con continent will run into skills issues. Africa has the same issue. But Africa has converted in some countries that skill disparity into an asset. So for example, in the apparel industry, as well as in the agricultural industry, many companies are pairing the low-skilled workers or the unskilled workers, farmers and growers and artisans who make fabrics with very high technology, logistics engineers, people who understand supply chain management, and financial technologists, and creating these viable companies that are creating sustainable income and sustainable economy for those countries. Lesotho, for example, a small country in the southern side of Africa, employs 100,000 people in this industry. They growth from 40,000 just from a few years ago. 
Another example is with respect to how Africa is leveraging its diaspora and skills that are imported into the continent. So Africa has a large diaspora, and many of them have skills that they have acquired from different countries. But one of the things that they're doing that is extremely important is they're adapting those learnings and those skills to the needs of Africa. So for example, we know that ambulance services in the US or in many Western countries are pretty much triage units that transport people to major hospitals. In many regions in Africa, they're full-fledged mobile clinics, clinics that can treat and diagnose communities of people and provide full health care. Secondly, an inventor, Dr. Oyeshola, invented what is called the hospital in a box, a solution that is modular and provides a full operations theater in a mobile unit or a full clinical unit. What this means is that these are technologies that also could be exported to the rest of the world, and they were done in Africa. So why should the world care? Why does it matter? If you take a minute to look at the chart behind you, what you'll see is that issues prevail everywhere in the world. In fact, the United Nations and the Millennium Group and the World Health Organization came up with a list of the most dire issues that will affect our globe in the 21st century. And you guessed it, what did they find? They found that those issues were identical to the issues that Africa is facing and solving today. They included poverty, inadequate water supply, inadequate food supply. Surprisingly, many of our major cities are food deserts. Weapons proliferation in terms of nuclear armament, disasters, we just experienced a few of them, and lack of energy or enough energy supply because of many growing economies like China and India that continue to demand more energy supply. So what that tells us is that the solutions that Africa is developing today could very quickly become relevant to the rest of the world. So, I'm not here to tell you that Africa is problem-free and has solved all its problems. No, Africa is still a long way from being problem-free. But it's experienced some very positive outcomes. I'll tell you a few of those. In 2013, Africa's GDP was $1.3 trillion. Today, $3.3 trillion. But the big number is that by 2050, $29 trillion. That will be six times faster than the rest of the world in the same time period. Another statistics, by 2020, 128 million households are expected to spend $1.4 trillion, $11,000 per household. Imagine if you and I got into business, the opportunity that exists for us there. Another thing that's happening is sustainable cities are springing up. Kigeli, Rwanda, Wharton, Rwanda, yes. Addis Ababa, which is in Ethiopia, and of course, Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire. Another phenomenon is with respect to new companies, new technology-based companies that are springing up, including Jumia, which is an online retail company that one day might compete with Amazon, or Iroko, which is Africa's number one media streaming company that has caused Netflix to now show African movies. Yes, you can go on Netflix and watch African movies. Or Cafe Neo, that is looking at Starbucks and uses Africa's coffee. So I can go on and on about companies that are now getting global attention, becoming global competitors, or having global presence. The other thing that this phenomenon has really enabled is that Africa has now generated a band of solution providers, young problem solvers, both in the tech and non-tech space, that have had this vast experience that could contribute to the solutions of our world tomorrow. So who am I and why am I telling you this story? My name is Ngazi Bell. 
I was born and raised in Nigeria, West Africa. I studied physics, came to the United States to study electrical engineering, have had the opportunity to work in both the private and public sector. I've also had the opportunity to work in five of the world's continents, including North America, Asia, Middle East, Europe. One of the things that I found is that working with diaspora Africans in all those countries, as well as working with African innovators and entrepreneurs on the continent, is that the solutions they were providing were just as leverageable in the West, just as leverageable in all the countries that I've had the privilege of working in. I'm also right now working to enable African innovators with the fund that we're building. So what should you do tomorrow? Tomorrow, take time to know that not so far away neighbor that is Africa. Know more parts of its stories. Understand it, study it. Participate in it if you can. So that when you hear the sound of Africa, you won't hear poverty or lack or sad and pictures or buzzwords like child soldier, blood diamond, or even safari. That's a good one. But instead, when you hear of Africa, you hear opportunities. You hear possibilities. So I want to leave you with this personal quote. The significance of Africa as the world's emerging and longest marketplace is not determined by what anyone thinks or permits as a story or even the trend of any given season. The significance of Africa is that it is big, rich, troublesome, and solution prone and can never be discounted. As it emerges, it brings with it some of the most important tools to remake the globe. So watch our world. The fixers are coming, and many of them are being trained in Africa. Thank you. <laughs>